I got to ask, everybody has that one book that you can just pick up and reread over and over and over again, even though you know every line by heart. What's your book? So for me, you know, this was probably no surprise given what I said earlier, but it, it, you know, I have to go with Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles. Uh, oh. just, just because he is, the, the, the beauty of the prose, the way he brings his personal experience to this idea of exploring Mars, I mean, you know, some people talk about Chronicles being a dated book because it's, you know, we know that there's not life on Mars now from, from the science side, but the poetry of that book is just so gorgeous. You know, and I, I mean, I could, I, yeah, I could almost say this with any Bradbury book, but that one in particular is, is very near and dear to my heart. So. Wow, that, that is a great choice. And movie, same thing with a movie. Now this one, you know, I'm actually going to go away from science fiction for this one a little bit, and I, I'm going to I'm going to say the Milagro Beanfield War, and this was a Robert Redford film done back in the '80s. It's it's kind of a magical realism film about uh, about northern New Mexico, and it's basically about the small town against a, a big corporate development uh, thing. But what I absolutely love in that film is. You know, people people talk about you know seeing the the first time that they come across a book where they see themselves reflected in, and that movie it's like I saw the people from my mom's hometown in northern New Mexico for the first time in a major motion picture, and I saw the the kind of almost you know that that almost you know that just taking it for granted that angels and and spirits and and such all exist around us and you know just just that whole you know the multiculturalism of of that part of the state you know which which we have down here in southern new mexico where i live as well but you know the flavor is a little different between the two halves of the state like you know a lot of states are and uh but that movie just did a delightful job of capturing it. And I, I've been fortunate enough to also meet uh, John Nichols, who, who was the author of the book and the screenplay for that movie. And uh, wow. he lives up in, in Taos, New Mexico. And uh, yeah, just, just great. And uh, my, my favorite story with him is, is my oldest daughter is, is named Miranda. And before he even you know, I actually met him, well, I'd met him before my kids were born, and then I, I got a chance to talk to him at a, uh, there was a book festival here in Las Cruces, and, and my daughter was very young at the time, maybe three, four years old, and I, you know, I, I had her with me, and he looks at, at her as a, a little girl, and he says, I bet your name is Miranda, and I bet you love to dance, and both of those things are just absolutely true, it was just that, that, lovely bit of insight that, that, you know, sort of almost was like her, almost like predicting the future. It was just wonderful. Wow. Okay. And then if you had one, one kernel, one nugget of wisdom to give to, I'd say someone like my son, who's just starting out trying to write, what, what is, what is the one, the one kind of, Confucius saying you would say to somebody, here's what you should do. I, I think the big thing I would say is read, read everything you can get your hands on, read, you know, paying attention, just, just read, you know, read, read in your genre of choice, read outside your genre of choice. Uh, you know, Ray Bradbury used to actually be very specific and say, read one short story a day read one poem a day, read one essay a day. Because if you do that, your, your education in writing will just go up magnitudes. And, and for a period of time, I did exactly that. And man, you know, poetry will just teach you, you know, economy of language and finding the right words, you know. And, and I've, I've, I've actually, you know, been fortunate enough to publish a few poems. And I think, uh, I think there is a lot to be said about reading poetry. There's, you know, I, I, I sometimes, you know, reading outside the genre of choice, it's like, you know, I, 
picked up a few, you know, Western novels, picked up a few romance novels. And it's like, gee, you know, it's like, okay, I'm not going to write this novel. But, you know, the way this romance novel handles, you know, this, this romantic encounter, you know, I can bring that to my science fiction novel and give it a different, a whole quantum leap level of emotional engagement that I might not have done. You know, maybe this Western novel, you know, of course, science fiction and Westerns have long, you know, played on each other. But, you know, it's like you, you see the frontier kind of come to life in a Western novel in a way that you might not think about in a science fiction novel. You know, right. characters interacting. And you might think, you know, I could bring that, you know, maybe it's not the Native Americans and the settlers, but maybe it's the, the blue people and the green people or something <laughs> like that. You know, it's, uh, right. you know, you can, you can take lessons from these things. So my, my kernel of knowledge is, is read, read everything you can get a hold of.